Hey, I'm Hannah, and this is Is It Bad, the show where we answer all of your burning cookware questions. Today, is it bad to pour cold water on a hot pan? This is a great question we got from John Doe 1000. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's a fake name, but it's a real question. I've been there before too. You're in the kitchen, you're cooking a meal, and you need your stovetop cleared. And how tempting it is to put that pan in the sink. Maybe rinse it down so no one burns themselves and continue on your merry way. If your pan's hot, you can get quite a violent sizzle, even just from the water on the bottom of the sink. But is this actually a bad thing for your pan? Most pots and pans are made from multiple materials, whether it's layers of metal in the base, the handles, the rivets, the coating like enamel or nonstick, or something else. And the materials used in these elements all expand and contract at different rates, depending on how they're heated and cooled. Usually this isn't an issue, because the change happens gradually, while as the potter pan slowly warms up in the oven or on the stove, and slowly comes down to room temperature when you're done. It's when you introduce a really dramatic temperature change that problems can arise. This is called thermal shock. This can cause breakage because the pan is essentially pulling against itself, which can result in warping, wiggly handles, cracking, shattering, chipping, and more. I actually cracked the interior of my own Dutch oven by pulling it out of the oven and putting it right in the sink. There was water on the bottom of the sink and that was the culprit. But now I know there are a couple steps you can take to keep thermal shock from messing up your cookware. First, be really careful with glass and stone cookware in particular around moisture when they're hot. Even if there's just a little bit of moisture on the counter, this can cause them to crack or shatter, and once you do that, there's no coming back. Let your cookware cool down gradually on the stove or on a heat-proof surface like a trivet before you get it wet. I like to toss mine in the oven if I'm not using it and I'm really short on space, but make sure to double check your oven before you go to preheat it next time or else you'll have an oven full of hot pans to deal with. Speaking from experience here, another thing you can do is buy the right skillet. With nonstick skillets, thermal shock can actually ruin the coating in addition to causing other problems. This is one reason why we prefer traditional PTFE nonstick pans over green pans. Because of the way they're coated, the green pans are more susceptible to thermal shock. Whenever we test skillets, we heat them up on the stovetop and then plunge them into a bucket of ice water. This is an extreme durability test designed to mimic years of abuse. In a recent testing, one of the green pans started to flake after just one thermal shock. And if the pan is less durable and you just have to go out and buy another one, are they really that green at all? Warping is another huge issue with thermal shock. If your pan warps and it sits crookedly and your oil pools to one side, leaving other part of the pan bare, this can cause your food to cook unevenly. This can be a big problem if you have an induction or an electric stove where the pan really needs to sit flat to have good contact with the heat source. A good carbon steel pan or a cast iron skillet will be a bit more durable than pans made from other materials, so you can beat them up a bit more. But if you're buying a stainless steel skillet, you really want to choose the right one. Fully clad pans are stamped out of layers of metal sandwiched together. Disc bottom pans are made by gluing the bottom of the pan to the rest of it. These are much less durable because the adhesives holding the bottom of the pan on can fail. You can tell whether your pan is a disc bottom pan or fully clad by looking for a seam around the base. If you see a seam, it's a disc bottom pan. This well-designed, fully clad pan from All Clad has topped our reviews for years. And no, they didn't pay us to say that. This pan passed our rigorous tests fair and square. It's built to last a lifetime and withstand any abuse that will inevitably happen along the way. It has three layers of metal, aluminum sandwiched by two layers of steel. So you get aluminum speedy heat conduction moderated by slower transmitting, heat retaining steel. And because all three layers are stamped together and nothing's glued on, these pans are much more resistant to any kind of abuse. So is it bad to put cold water on a hot pan? Yeah, it actually is bad. It's better for the longevity of your pots and pans if you let them cool down before you put them in the sink or run them underwater. Being careful with glass dishes and baking stones and buying the right skillet can make all the difference in the lifespan of your cookware. All right, thanks for watching. Ask your own is it bad questions in the comments. Check out the links to our favorite skillets in the video description below and make sure to hit that subscribe button.